service procedures for the SAF P89 air disc brake with parallel or tapered spindle axle. Note, before beginning any axle or brake service procedures, park the vehicle on a level surface. Block the wheels to prevent the vehicle from moving. You should also support the vehicle and axles with safety stands. Do not work under a vehicle supported only by jacks. Jacks can slip or fall over, resulting in serious personal injury and damage to components. After securing the vehicle and supporting the axles being serviced, release the trailer brakes and cage the spring brakes according to the spring brake manufacturer's instructions. Next, remove the tire and wheel assembly to access the hub and rotor, making sure to use a supporting device such as a wheel dolly. Remove the ABS sensor from the sensor holder by pulling it straight out from the holder. If you are replacing the ABS sensor, discard the old sensor after removal. If the sensor retaining spring clip needs replacement, you may also remove it from the sensor holder and discard. Now detach the brake chamber from the brake caliper by loosening and removing the two mounting nuts. Remove the brake caliper from the brake spider by using a size 24 mm socket to loosen. Discard all four brake caliper bolts upon removal. With a half inch socket, remove the six hub cap bolts and the hub cap itself. Be prepared to collect lubrication fluid when removing the hub cap. The SAF P89 air disc brake features inner and outer axle nuts. If your configuration features an orange keeper arm, then you may have the P89 with Pro Torque nut. Please refer to the SAF P89 Plus air disc brake service procedure video for Pro Torque nut removal and installation instructions. Using a 564th inch hex socket, Remove the set screw located in the axle washer. Remove the outer axle nut from the spindle using a 4 and 3 8 inch socket. Next, remove the axle washer. Now remove the inner axle nut. A wrench with a 4 and 13 16 inch socket may be required. Remove the outer hub bearing from the spindle. Now grasp the head unit with both hands and pull the head unit off the axle spindle. Note, depending on the type of hub seal, the hub seal and inner bearing may remain on the spindle or come off with the head unit. Remove the inner hub bearing from the spindle or from the inside of the hub. The spindle mount hub seal can be driven off the spindle by striking the ring from the back side or prying off with a crow's foot bar. Be careful not to gouge the spindle shoulder. Discard the used seal. A new seal is required when reassembled. Caution: Do not use a chisel to cut the hub seal. The spindle shoulder can be damaged, resulting in a leak which, if not avoided, could lead to wheel end and or brake failure. Next, completely inspect the bearings. After removing the hub unit, clean excess grease from the bearings. Caution: Thoroughly clean the bearings with solvent. Never use steam, water, or compressed air to clean the bearings. Damage or rust could occur. Important: Bearings that are rusted, flaked, pitted, or have damaged cages should be replaced. It is recommended to replace all questionable bearings and always replace the cup and cone as a matched set. Important. Never reassemble a tapered roller bearing in a damaged or worn bearing cup or spindle. The bearing cup or spindle should be replaced and not remachined if damaged or worn. Following are the SAF P89 rotor replacement procedures. After having removed the ABS sensor and head unit from the spindle, you can now replace the rotor. To remove the rotor from the head unit, Use a size 15 16 inch socket to loosen and discard all 10 connection bolts and washers. Clean the rotor contact surfaces on the head unit. Using compressed air, clean the tapped holes in the hub. Check to make sure the threads are undamaged. Before attaching the new rotor, 
inspect the wheel bolts on the hub and replace any damaged bolts. Only replace bolts that are damaged or in need of replacement. Remove the wheel bolts by pressing them out of the head unit and discard them. Install new wheel bolts by pressing them into the head unit. Now attach the new rotor to the hub using 10 new bolts and washers supplied in the rotor kit. Using a torque wrench, tighten the bolts to 190 to 210 foot-pounds. Important! When attaching a new rotor to the head unit, use only new SAF specified connection bolts. Bolts must be clean and free from oil and grease. Following are the procedures for seal, bearing, and hub installation. This procedure applies only to spindle-mounted wheel seals. Note, although all SAF P89 air disc brake wheel ends are manufactured with spindle-mounted wheel seals, they can be serviced with either spindle or hub-mounted seals. Important, all SAF P89 disc brake wheel ends are factory lubricated with oil or grease. Do not mix oil and grease wheel end lubricants when servicing. Before installing the wheel seal on the axle spindle, inspect the machine spindle seal surface for nicks, scratches, burrs, or marks. If needed, use crocus cloth or emery cloth to repair any damaged areas. Thoroughly clean the spindle and spindle threads of rust, dirt, grease, or any other contaminants that could damage the hub seal and cause it to leak and to avoid introduction of contaminants into the lubricant cavity. Caution! Never install a spindle-mounted wheel seal in the hub and then force it onto the axle spindle by tightening the axle nut. Damage to the seal will result. To avoid damaging the seal, support the hub against the spindle inner shoulder until the outer bearing and adjusting nut are installed. Apply a thin layer of sealant to the outside diameter of the spindle shoulder. Place the wheel seal on the spindle with the side labeled oil side facing out towards the end of the spindle. Seat the wheel seal into place using a hub seal installation tool. Turn the tool one quarter turn with every hammer tap until the seal is properly seated with the metal face of the seal flush with the inner shoulder of the axle spindle. Clean and remove any excess sealant from the spindle. Prepare the hub for installation by first removing the old lube and thoroughly cleaning the hub cavity and hub bore. If needed, use emery cloth to remove any burrs or old bore sealant. Inspect the hub bore for damage. Replace if necessary. Install new inner and outer bearing cups into the hub as necessary. Note, if using oil for lubrication, coat bearings with 80-90 gear oil before installation. If using grease, the inner and outer bearing and hub cavity must be pre-packed with grease before installation. Caution: Failure to lubricate bearing correctly and maintain proper lubrication could result in bearing damage. Properly lubricate and install the inner bearing onto the spindle. Also lubricate inside the hub cavity. Gently push the head unit onto the spindle to the proper position. Following are the procedures for seal, bearing, and hub installation. This procedure applies only to hub-mounted wheel seals. Important. All SAF P89 disc brake wheel ends are factory lubricated with oil or grease. Do not mix oil and grease wheel end lubricants when servicing. Begin by removing all burrs from the hub bore and spindle. Thoroughly clean the hub cavity and spindle. Note, do not apply any sealant to the spindle shoulder. Place the hub on a smooth, hard surface in a horizontal position. Pre-lube the inner bearing and place it into the hub bearing cup. Place the wheel seal on the installation tool. Make sure that the words oil side face the inner bearing. Position the tool, with the seal correctly mounted in the tool head, 
into the hub bore. Use a three to five pound hammer to drive against the end of the tool. Drive the seal into the bore until complete bottoming is assured. Remove the installation tool and apply a thin layer of lubricant on the inside diameter surface of the seal. Gently push the head unit onto the spindle to the proper position. Caution, do not ram the hub into the spindle bearing shoulder. This could damage the wheel seal. Following are the procedures for proper lubrication, outer bearing installation, and hub adjustment. This procedure applies to both spindle-mounted and hub-mounted wheel seals. If you intend to lubricate with oil and the hub cap is equipped with a fill plug, please follow the oil fill instructions following hub cap installation instead. If your hub is equipped with a lubricant fill plug on the side, please follow the oil or grease fill instructions following hub cap installation instead. If your hub is not equipped with a lubricant fill plug, then you must use an alternate procedure. When using oil and a hub cap that is not equipped with an oil fill plug, you must fill the hub cavity with oil until it runs over the outer bearing cup. When using grease, you must pre-pack the hub cavity before installing the outer bearing. Using a template, fill the hub 50% full of grease or to a three o'clock and nine o'clock level. Next, install the outer bearing onto the spindle. Coat the outer bearing with lubricant and place the outer bearing on the spindle and into the bearing cup. Now we will install the three-piece axle nut. Install the inner axle nut finger tight against the outer bearing. To seat the bearing, use a 4 and 13 16 inch socket and a torque wrench to tighten the nut to 200 foot-pounds followed by spinning the wheel at least one full rotation. Perform this step three times. Now that the bearing has been set, back the nut off until it is loose. To properly adjust the bearing, use a torque wrench to tighten the nut to 50 foot-pounds, followed by spinning the wheel at least one full rotation. Perform this step three times. Back the nut off one quarter turn. Do not include socket backlash in the one quarter turn. Next, install the lock washer. If the hole in the washer is not aligned with the pin on the inner nut, turn the washer around and reinstall. If the pin and hole are still not aligned, slightly adjust parts as needed. Install the outer axle nut finger tight against the axle lock washer. Using a 4 and 3 8 inch socket, torque the outer axle nut to 200 to 300 foot-pounds. Now, using a dial indicator, Verify that the end play reading is one thousandth of an inch to five thousandths of an inch. Attach the magnetic base of a dial indicator to the spindle. Touch the dial indicator stem to the hub cap gasket face. For reading number one, slightly rotate the wheel end in both directions while pushing inward until the dial indicator does not change. Then set the dial indicator to zero. For reading number two, Slightly rotate wheel end in both directions while pulling outward until the dial indicator does not change. The end play value is now indicated on the dial. Readjust bearing if necessary. Note, if wheel end, bearing end, play needs adjustment, remove the outer nut and lock washer, then tighten or loosen the inner nut as needed, then reinstall the lock washer and outer nut according to the outlined procedures. Warning. Failure to maintain proper hub bearing adjustment could allow bearing failure and wheel end separation, which, if not avoided, could result in death or serious injury. Once adjustment has been completed, install a single set screw into the axle washer. The axle washer features four set screw holes. At least one of these holes should be unobstructed after installing the outer axle nut. Use a 5 64 inch hex socket to install a single set screw and torque to 16 to 20 foot-pounds. Next, install the hub cap assembly, making sure the hub cap gasket is in place. Important, when installing the hub cap, make sure the hub cap gasket is not bent or damaged. When installing the hub cap bolts, do not over torque. 
this can crush the hubcap gasket. Caution, failure to avoid damaging the hubcap gasket could allow lubricant to leak, which, if not avoided, could result in bearing failure. Install the six bolts to secure the hubcap assembly. Torque the bolts to 12 to 16 foot-pounds. If oil is used for lubrication and your hubcap is equipped with an oil fill plug, we can now fill the hub. Important: Do not mix oil with grease. If the bearing assembly has been lubricated with grease, do not add oil. Begin by removing the plug and fill the hub to the full mark with 8090 gear oil through the hole in the hub cap. Allow the oil to flow through the bearings and level off. Insert the plug back into the hole in the hub cap when complete. Important: Axles equipped with a centralized tire inflation system must use a vented hub cap. If your hub is equipped with a lubricant fill plug, First, remove the lubricant fill plug on the side of the hub and rotate the hub so that the lubricant fill hole is at the 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock position. Fill the hub to 50% full of grease or oil or until the lubricant reaches the lubricant fill hole. Reinstall the lubricant fill plug when finished. To reinstall the caliper onto the brake spider, use four new SAF-specific brake caliper bolts. Note, the caliper is connected to the disc brake spider using four SAF-specific bolts, three standard bolts, and one shoulder bolt. The shoulder bolt is located at the top mounting hole whether the caliper is installed forward or rearward of the axle. Important: Make sure that the brake caliper is mounted on the correct side of the axle. The correct position can be identified by the lengths of the guide pins on the caliper unit. The longer guide pins should be positioned on the bottom of the caliper unit when installed rear of the axle and on top when forward of the axle. Pre-torque the bolts to 88 foot-pounds from inner bolts to outer bolts using a size 24 mm socket. Verify the pre-torque of the bolts a second time and, if necessary, re-tighten all bolts to 88 foot-pounds. Final torque from inner bolts to outer bolts should be to 331 plus or minus 22 foot-pounds. Next, reinstall the SAF brake chamber. Install the brake chamber nuts until the brake chamber is in full contact with the mounting bracket. Pre-torque both nuts to 60 to 75 foot-pounds. Then, torque both nuts to 130 to 155 foot-pounds. Next, install the ABS sensor if your vehicle is equipped with them. Note, when replacing the ABS sensor, do not mix sensors from different manufacturers. If the sensor retaining spring clip was previously removed and discarded, first install a new spring clip onto the sensor holder. Now install a new ABS sensor by pushing it directly into the sensor holder and spring clip until it contacts the ABS toner ring in the hub assembly. Uncage the spring brake according to the spring brake manufacturer's instructions. Before reinstalling the wheel, verify that the brake system is functioning properly. Warning: Failure to verify brake system function after rotor replacement could result in brake malfunction which, if not avoided, could result in death or serious injury. To inspect the brake pads, they must be removed. Start by removing the spring clip cotter pin, washer, and pad retainer pin. This will release the pad retainer. It is recommended that these items be discarded and replaced. If necessary, remove the cable guide plate and wear contacts. Locate the adjuster cap on the caliper. Use the tab on the adjuster cap for careful and proper removal. Caution: Do not use auxiliary equipment to remove the adjuster cap. Damage to the adjuster seal could occur. Using a 10 mm six-point box wrench, turn the adjuster adapter counterclockwise, listening for a clicking sound as the adjuster backs off and increases the running clearance. Note. Do not use an open-ended wrench to turn the adjuster adapter as it may cause damage to the adapter. Now that the adjuster has been backed off, the brake pads can be easily removed for inspection. Important: When replacing a worn brake pad, 
all pads on the axle must be replaced. Only use brake pads that have been approved by the vehicle, axle, and brake manufacturer. Next, install the brake pads in their proper position. The inner brake pad has two circles with X's as shown, while the outer brake pad has a relatively smooth backing to it. Make sure that the pads are in the correct position and the friction material is facing the rotor when installed. Insert the pad retainer into the brake caliper groove. Press down on the retainer to install the pad retainer pin. Fit the washer and spring clip cotter pin onto the pin. Now, check the function of the brake adjuster to verify proper operation. Fit the box wrench onto the adjustment adapter in a position where it can rotate freely in a clockwise direction during the next steps. Actuate the brake 5 to 10 times. If the adjuster is functioning properly, the box wrench will rotate cyclically clockwise with each actuation of the brake. The more the brake is actuated, the less the tool will move. Note, if the box wrench does not rotate at all, rotates only on the first actuation, or with every actuation rotates backwards and forwards, the adjuster is faulty and the brake caliper needs to be replaced. With the adjuster functioning properly, the brakes can now be adjusted. Using the 10mm 6-point box wrench, tighten the adjuster adapter until resistance is felt while rotating the hub. Then, rotate the adjuster adapter three clicks counterclockwise, increasing the clearance. After the brake adjustment procedure, measure the clearance between the pad backs and the pressure fitting. This must be measured with two gauges at the same time over the entire surface of the pad and the pressure fittings. Use 220 mm long feeler gauges for this measurement. The clearance measurement at both pressure fittings must be between 0.6 mm and 1.2 mm. Warning: If the clearance is too large, braking efficiency may be impaired. If the clearance is too small, the brake may overheat and cause further damage. Note, if the clearance difference between the two pressure fittings and pad back is greater than 0.25 millimeters, the clearance of the caliper guide must be checked for wear. If the clearance of both pressure fittings is greater than 1.2 millimeters, retest the adjuster function and perform another brake adjustment. If after the adjustment, the clearance measurement is less than 0.6 millimeters, Refer to SAF Holland XL SA 40001RM Compressed Air Disc Brake Repair Instruction Manual for troubleshooting options. Before replacing the adjuster cap, apply grease to the seal of the cap. Install the cap in position so the tab is directed away from the brake chamber. In the event of a flanged brake chamber, the cap will still be accessible. If necessary, reinstall the cable guide plate and wear contacts. The SAF P89 disc brake with parallel spindle axle service procedure is now complete.